Our story today is called Wanda's Roses and it's by Pat Bryson. One morning in May, on the way to school, Wanda noticed a bush growing in the empty corner lot at Fillmore and Hudson Streets. It must have been growing for a while because it was about two feet tall and Wanda was surprised she hadn't noticed it before. But there it was, bare and thorny, and Wanda, who loved beautiful things, felt her heart beat faster. A rose bush, she, sh she said to herself, my very own rose bush. Now the rose bush didn't really belong to Wanda, but since nobody seemed to own the lot or the heaps of junk that were piled there, she decided she would care for this bush and make it her own. All during school, she thought about her rose bush. During art, she drew pictures of what it would look like and bloom. And during library, she borrowed books on arranging flowers. During science, she asked so many questions about how to take care of it that finally her teacher said she really must stop asking questions about roses and start thinking about electricity, which is what the lesson was about. After school, she rushed to the rose bush. It was still bare and thorny. Maybe it needs some more sun, thought Wanda. So she put down her school bag and began dragging some of the nearby trash out to the curb. Mrs. Turner, who was on her way to the store, stopped to help her with a broken chair. Cleaning up the neighborhood, Wanda, Mrs. Turner asked, that's a nice project for you. Oh, I'm not just cleaning, Wanda told her. I'm helping my rose bush to get more sun so it will bloom. Your rose bush, Mrs. Turner asked, where is your rose bush? Over there, Wanda said, pointing proudly to the bare thorny bush. Oh, Wanda, I'm not so sure that's a rose bush, Mrs. Turner said gently. Sure it is, said Wanda. I've seen rose bushes in books and this is what they look like before they bloom. You just wait. In a few weeks, this lot will be full of roses. Well, said Mrs. Turner, shaking her head. Good luck with it, Wanda. And as she walked away, Mrs. Turner thought to herself, if that's a rose bush, then I'm the Queen of England. The next day after school, Wanda hurried to her rose bush. It was still bare and thorny. Maybe it needs more air, thought Wanda. So she put down her school bag and began taking more of the trash out to the curb. Once I get all this trash out of here, nothing will block the air from getting to my rose bush, Wanda thought. Mr. Claudel was on his way home from work, saw Wanda trying to drag at an old door and stopped to help. Cleaning up the neighborhood, are you, Wanda? He asked. Not just cleaning, Mr. Claudel, Wanda told him. I'm getting rid of this trash so my rose bush will get more air. A rose bush here, Mr. Claudel asked. And so Wanda showed him the rose bush. I don't know much about gardening, Wanda, Mr. Claudel said, frowning, but I don't think that's a rose bush. Sure it is, said Wanda, and in a few weeks, this lot will be filled with the sweetest smelling roses you ever saw. She thanked Mr. Claudel for his help and went off to drag away some more trash. Mr. Claudel shook his head. If that's a rose bush, he said to himself, then I'm the king of France. After day, every day after school that week and the next, Wanda worked in the empty lot. Mrs. Giamani, who, is, who lived in an apartment next door, gave Wanda trash bags for the old shoes, beer bottles, broken toys, and bits of glass that she was picking up. You have done a great job cleaning up this lot, Wanda, Mrs. Giamani told her. Oh, I'm not just cleaning, Wanda said. I have to get rid of all this trash so my rose bush will get enough sun and fresh air to bloom. But uh, where's your rose bush, Mrs. Giamani asked. So Wanda showed her. Mrs. Giamani put her hand on Wanda's shoulder and spoke softly to her. Wanda, she said, this is not a rose bush. Oh, but it is, said Wanda, and in a few weeks, this lot will be filled with the most beautiful roses you ever saw. That would be nice, said Mrs. Giamani, but I don't want you to be disappointed if this bush doesn't bloom. Don't worry, Mrs. Giamani, Wanda answered, I won't be disappointed. Mrs. Giamani sighed, that is not a rose bush and will never be one, she thought to herself. The next week, when the rose bush still wasn't blooming, Wanda talked to her school librarian. I need some books about getting roses to bloom, she told Miss Jones. Oh, do you have a rose bush, Wanda? Miss Jones asked. Yes, but it doesn't have flowers yet, and I know it, it has enough sun and fresh air. Does it have enough water? Miss Jones asked. Water, Wanda said. Of course, that will make it bloom. That afternoon, she hurried to the rose bush. It was still there and thorny. She looked at the dry ground and smiled. Don't worry, little bush, she said out loud. I'll get you some water and then you'll be able to grow flowers. Wanda went to the butcher shop across the street. Mr. Sanchez, would you please give me some water from for my rose bush? Rose bush, is that what I see you taking care of and talking to every day over there? Are you sure that's a rose bush, Wanda? Mr. Sanchez asked. 
Oh, yes, I'm sure, Wanda said, but it can't bloom because it needs water. Mr. Sanchez gave her a water in a plastic bucket. I hope that really is a rose bush, Wanda, he said, looking at her doubtfully. You'll see, Wanda told him. In a few weeks, that whole lot will be full of roses. As Wanda carried the rose to her rose bush, Mr. Sanchez muttered, in a few weeks, that thorn bush will still be a thorn bush. Every day, Wanda ran to her rose bush after school, but every day it was still bare and thorny. She watered it and sang to it and checked its bare branches for roses. Mr. Claudel, on his way home from work, stopped to see if there were any roses yet. Mrs. Turner, on her way to the butcher shop, stopped to see if there were any roses yet. Mrs. Giamani, seeing Wanda in the lot, called down for her from her apartment to ask if there were any roses yet. When Wanda went to the library at school, Miss Jones asked if there were any roses yet. And every day when Wanda went to the butcher shop for water, Mr. Sanchez asked if there were any roses yet. To each person, Wanda would answer the same thing. Just you wait, pretty soon this whole lot will be filled with roses. And then one day in June, Wanda had an idea. Looking at the bare thorny bush, she said, if my rose bush won't give roses to me, I'll just have to give roses to my rose bush. And when she saw Mrs. Turner, Mr. Claudel, Mrs. Giamani, Miss Jones, and Mr. Sanchez, she gave each of them an invitation that said, please come for tea and muffins in Wanda's Rose Garden Saturday morning at nine. Oh dear, said Miss Turner. Is she still expecting to get roses from that bush? Oh no, said Mr. Claudel, and she's worked so hard too. Oh my, said Mrs. Giamani, she'll be so disappointed. Oh darn, said Mr. San Sanchez, there must be something I can do. Oh good, said Miss Jones, who had only heard about the bush from Wanda and hadn't seen it for herself, and I'll bring the muffins. The night before the tea party, everyone was very busy, and the next morning at nine, everyone was surprised to see Wanda's rose bush covered with roses, paper roses, that Wanda had made herself and carefully tied to each bare thorny branch. But more surprising yet, everyone who came to the party had brought along a rose bush to plant near Wanda's, except Miss Jones, who had brought delicious blueberry muffins. After they had eaten their muffins and drunk their tea, they all got busy planting rose bushes. Mr. Claudel and Mrs. Turner dug the holes. Mrs. Giamani held the bushes in place while Wanda and Miss Jones filled in around the roots with soil and Mr. Sanchez brought water from his shop and watered them all thoroughly. When the work was finished, Mr. Claudel said, Wanda, this is going to be a rose garden fit for a king. Or a queen, said Mrs. Turner. Wanda and the others smiled. And later that summer, the whole lot was filled with the biggest, most beautiful, sweetest smelling roses that anyone had ever seen, just as Wanda had always said it would be. And that is the end of our story. Thanks for joining me.